What's up guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing and today I'm checking out Amazon Basics BETG. Welcome back guys. So Amazon has decided they're going to go down the 3D printing route and they've started out with some filament. I recently checked out their PLA and now we're going to check out their PETG or PETG, depends on how you like to say it and their filament. So looking at the box, very basic filament, exactly the same as the PLA. The only sticker wraps around here to keep it shut and tells us it is PETG 3D printer filament, 1.75 millimeters. I got red and this is a one kilogram spool and I did buy this on my own because it took a while to get. So when they released it in June or July, it ended up taking almost two months for it to actually ship to me. And now that I have it, I really want to check it out. And the other thing to note is that this is in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different languages is represented here. So this probably is selling in a lot of different countries. Opening it up, you see we have a very, very good vacuum seal on it. And something that I like, I saw on the PLA, it is a Ziploc bag. So it is crimped out here, further out from the zipper. That's where the air is sucked out and this is heat. Uh, um, heat glued basically, it's a heater that just uh, heats up and melts the plastic together which gives it a very nice uh, airtight seal and that is looking pretty good so far. Inside there is a hefty desk pack in there and here we have the spool. It is a super duper bright vibrant red. Um, I don't know if this is going to be very, it looks to be opaque I really hope it is. I'm loving the opaque PETGs that are coming out nowadays. So we'll see it ends up going. It is a injection molded spool, one part. One part. Uh, this is a custom spool. I've never seen this spool before, so that is one thing that, to note. And it has these cutouts in the front. On the one side, it goes from 280 meters down to 70 meters. On the other side, it goes from 800 grams down to 200 grams. That gives you a very rough estimate of how much is actually on the spool, which is good to know. Down here in the seven languages, or this was five languages right here, uh, it is PETG, color red, 1.75 millimeters diameter, nozzle temperature 230 to 240, bed temperature 80C, net weight one kilogram. Uh, again, I am just super excited to see how this actually works out. Oh, and noting here on the back, there's a batch number barcode. I've said it before, keep an eye on when you get a filament like this and you get a spool that has that on there, if you end up having a problem, contact the company, send them the batch number, and I'll bet you any money they had problems with it and they will be more than willing to send you another spool. You might not even be the only one to tell them about it. They could have gotten dozens of people that have said, hey, I was batch number this. And within the range, they actually had some inconsistent filament. So make sure you check that out. I don't know if this is rebranded. It doesn't look like it to me because it's a custom spool. There's nothing similar to any other filament that I've seen yet. So I'm super excited for this. We're gonna throw this on a couple of printers and see how it turns out. All right, so here are the results of the Amazon Basics PETG. I'm honestly just flabbergasted that Amazon has their own brand of filament. And it's legit too, like it's their own spool. Like I have not seen this spool design before from any other, now granted, yes, they could be re-spooling it onto something different, which they most likely are. I don't think Amazon Warehouse is printing their own, uh, or should they be, they're not extruding their own filament. Highly doubt that. Someone's doing it for them. But the results speak for themselves. This was crazy awesome stuff. It is a slightly translucent PETG. It looked very opaque, just kind of looking at it here on the spool. But once actually printing it, uh, it does have some uh, translucency, transparency, see through ish niche in it, whatever you want to say the proper term for that is. Okay, so we're going to look at these, but this isn't everything I printed. I actually printed some other parts that are downstairs in the pantry. So let's go downstairs and take a look at those first. Into the pantry we go. And here's the parts. So there's just these simple brackets that I made. Uh, they're just 10 by uh, what, 15 or something like that millimeters. And uh, this one was a little bit too long. This is the first version. It has a little bit of flex to it here. This is the second version. What I need it for are these. These are this little Ikea bins that we have for a rolling cart that we don't have any space for it here. But we do have a need for these and all the kids' snacks. They come in here to get their snacks for school. 
but when you get low on the box, it gets annoying. So on these little bins here for all the leftover little bits to the snacks, go there. So I have three mounts on here and it's PDG, so it's not gonna break. It's gonna be very, very resilient. It's PDG, so it's not gonna break. It's gonna be resilient to the kids grabbing these on and off, but they're just wide enough that two of these fit on one bracket just perfectly. So I like them a lot and it's a great use, a great thing of practical printing right there. So some other practical printing that I did is this is a hot end clamp for the Monoprice Select Mini. I'm filming uh, part two of the mods for that. And uh, this was the first hot end that I made. Uh, this is off Thingiverse, but ended up being too long and the holes were just too tight. So I had to end up scrapping it and I ended up doing it in PLA, but PETG is much better for heat resistance, but it just clamps on there like that. 30 millimeter fan goes on the side, blower fan goes on the front. Uh, but yeah, it, it printed extremely well, zero stringing in it, as very strong as it should be. And again, it's, it's temperature resistant as well, which would be good for using it for a hot end. Obviously we have my maker coin here. It's very, very shiny, which I like. Uh, it, it has this very rich red flavor to it. I personally like it. It's kind of like a candy red uh, almost, but there's a little bit of stringing in there, which is to be expected from PTG. It does happen. Over supports, it did amazing. It's a little hard to see just due to the color, but very impressed around the cogs as well, printed beautifully. Uh, this was printed on the CR-10S. Most of these, actually all of these are printed on the CR-10S, um, and they just came out so nice. Very, very nice prints. No under extrusions in this anywhere. And again, nice adorable PETG print. So to give my kids something else to play with in a bath, I went ahead and print out a boat. This is just 20% infill. Uh, this is based off the Benchy boat by the CT3D guys. Uh, and this one actually does float, which is really nice. And again, it's just something extra for the kids to have. So I figured why not, you know, use some review filament to make some toys for the kid. Here's the first of two vases. This is just the basic spiral vase, which came out absolutely gorgeous. Really nice shine to it. Uh, three bottom layers went down well. No top layers, obviously, and it's in vase mode. So this took quite a while. I think this one took like eight hours, really, really slow in it. Um, but it, yeah, it just came out great. It's, you know, flexible a little bit just because it's PDG, it's the nature of the plastic. But yeah, really nice. I'm gonna have to hold the camera for this one, but this is a full size spin vase. This is the make anything uh, spin vase. It's huge, I mean, it, it literally was like, I think maybe 10 millimeters short of max height on the CR-10S, which is crazy. Uh, because it's printed so big, you do get a little bit of waves in the filament just because of the way it's cooling. That's something that Joel figured out a long time ago. Now, it's consistent with its extrusions. It is not consistent in its color. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can definitely see color variations in here slightly. Not a whole lot, but just slightly. Some of it is just optical illusion because it's uh, slightly translucent. So it's a little bit darker in the areas that go in, a little bit lighter the areas that are out. But if you look dead on at some of it, you can definitely see a little bit, there it is. You can definitely see some color variance in the filament itself. Not a big deal to me, but I didn't notice it until the top. I think it just might be the way that the light is hitting it, because down here, it doesn't look like it. But you get up here, it almost looks like it goes like lighter in color, it really doesn't. I don't know, it's weird, but still, great vase that is completely watertight, and I like it, it's huge. Finally, Halloween is coming up, so I printed out this uh, candy bowl. It's just this crazy skull. I saw somebody posted it online, I was like, ooh, I need to print that, give me the uh, thing number. So I went out and found it. Uh, this will just be a fun little just candy dish to have here at home. Uh, this took 18 hours on the CR-10S to print. Uh, it's really big and it took uh, like 300 grams of filament. So, a, you know, what, a third of the roll of a kilogram? Yeah, like just under a third of the roll was just to print this guy out. So happy to have it, but yeah, it's a, definitely a big long print. But I mean, the details, look here in the eyes. Ooh, me getting up in there. It's really hard to focus on this color. But yeah, I mean, it did really good. A little stringing there in the nose area, but over the eyes, the eyebrows, the cheeks, really nice and smooth. I mean, this is definitely meant to print without support, and the, the, the uh, model maker did a 
excellent job. The designer did a fantastic job of making it printable without supports. So Amazon's Basics PETG for 20 bucks and free prime shipping, well worth the purchase. Bar none, well worth the purchase. I enjoyed it. I would like to know where they're getting the filament from and what actual like the, the who is making it. It really resembles, even though it's PETG, it really resembles the look and feel of Repco filament. Uh, even though I only tested their PLA, this really reminds me of their PLA. I don't know why, it's just that the way that it looks and uh, the gloss to it really, really looks like their filament, but it's probably not. But either way, I'd like to know eventually one day. I thoroughly enjoyed printing this. It printed well for big items. It printed really well for small items. Uh, it's strong, it's durable, just like PETG should be or PETG should be. So I can't uh, recommend this enough. And again, with prime shipping, having this in two days, you really cannot beat that. No one can provide that. Uh, and that's kind of the problem with some of the other companies is that they charge shipping, a little more expensive. Even if they're cheaper, they still have to charge shipping because they're smaller companies. Amazon's huge, they can do this. But if you're looking for a big variety, like literally, I think there was like 20 some colors in their PLA and their PDG has quite a few colors as well. Definitely get on Amazon and check it out. So if you guys wanna pick some of this up, make sure you head down to the description. There's gonna be some Amazon affiliate links down there to pick this up. Please use those. And if you do, a little slice of your purchase or anything else you purchase on Amazon comes here to help me out the channel. And thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, if you think you wanna pick some of this up, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, talk in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you on this filament or how I do my reviews. If you guys want to stay in tune what's going on, hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell icon. That way you get an email notification or a push notification when I upload new content or do any live streams. And that way you're the first one to know what's going on here on my channel. If you guys support me financially, down below me is going to be a Patreon link. Go ahead and uh, click on that. Donate a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. And by donating that dollar, that gets you access to my Patreon feed and my after show, which I produce after almost every one of my videos. So please tune in to that. And other ways to donate down below is one-time links down there. And there's a bunch of foot links again for this and a bunch of other vendors and coupon codes. So make sure you check those out. And a little slice, like I said, comes back here to help me out the channel. I appreciate that. So thanks for watching guys. Until next time, happy printing.